problem is in here, on the unfinished side, we were going through the whole house with the home inspector and um, he told us that this outlet was ungrounded. Okay. I've been kind of afraid to use it because honestly I don't know what that means. Sure. Um, so we can look at it right away and tell that it is an ungrounded receptacle and you can run only two prongs. We have the hot and the neutral. We don't have any terminal for the ground wire. So I can kind of explain how all of this works and hopefully make it make sense a little bit more to you. When you call for power on a device, current is sent from the breaker in the electrical panel through the black wire, often referred to as the hot. The current will travel through the wire and into the appliance, giving it power. The used electrical current will then return back to the panel through the white or the neutral wire, thereby completing the circuit. For ease, these two wires are usually encased together in a jacket. When everything in the house is operating properly, there should be no issue with the flow of electricity. Technically, houses are powered with alternating current, so the current alternates back and forth as it distributes power. But for the sake of keeping the explanation simple, this is a general flow of electricity. Now, if a fault occurs somewhere in the device or the receptacle, that electric current will travel where it's the easiest. If the device being powered is made out of metal, like many appliances, the whole thing has the chance of becoming electrified and can shock someone that touches it. To control fault current, code added the requirement of a grounding wire, which is usually just a bare copper wire that goes inside of the jacket with the hot and neutral wires. The bare copper is extremely conductive, so if there's ever a fault, the current will travel through the grounding wire back to the panel, and the surge of current will trip the breaker, cutting power from that device. All right, Colin, so we have a couple of solutions for this problem. Okay. So the easiest thing that we can do is we can leave the existing wiring as it is and install a ground fault circuit interrupting receptacle. How this works is it senses a certain amount of power coming in and a certain amount of power going back out. It wants to see the same amount. So let's say we have 10 amps coming in, it wants to see 10 amps coming back on the other side. If it sees 9.995 amps, something as small as 5 thousandths of an amp, this is designed to trip and give you an added layer of protection. It sees that power going somewhere else that it shouldn't, and that's why it trips. That's why we use them in something like a kitchen, outdoors. We don't know if the power is going to water, somewhere that it shouldn't be going. So we want to have this in place. The good thing is we have to have this in an unfinished basement if we're installing a receptacle anyway. So we have to put this here. The downside is we still don't have the equipment grounding conductor that I really want to have in this system. So what I'd prefer to do is since we have access to everything and it's a wide open basement and a short run, I'd really rather run a new cable with the equipment grounding conductor in it so everything is sized properly, everything is safe, clean and new. Sounds great. All right, Colin, now we're going to turn that circuit off. We'll take the multimeter, plug that into the receptacle, and let me know we don't have power. All set? All set. That's it, Heath. All right, perfect. Now that that's off, we can take that apart. Not only is that receptacle ungrounded, but over here behind the washing machine, this receptacle has a bunch of violations as well. I think the best thing to do is take both of these out and install a single new dedicated laundry circuit to make everything correct. All right, one down. That's that. So now we can mount the metal electrical box to the concrete wall. We've chosen an electrical metal box because we don't need additional lumber to mount this to the concrete. So this conduit coming down the wall is going to house the wire coming down to our electrical box. We have to put a slight bend in this conduit in order to fit in the box. Since this is a standard connection size, they actually make a conduit bending tool that'll let us bend this conduit to the exact size that we need. Since this receptacle is going to be used for a laundry circuit, we want to make sure we run a 12 gauge wire because it is code and it can handle a heavier load. We want to make sure that we turn the power off at the main breaker. That way when we take the panel cover off, there are no energized parts inside. We're going to use an arc fault breaker with a hot and the neutral tied to the breaker. 
the white pigtail will tie to the neutral bar, and the ground we've just installed will tie to the grounding bar. All right, we're just going to plug this last machine in. That's all powered on. You're all set. That looks awesome. Thank you so much for the explanation. Well, thanks for having me. It's Functional. A much safer install. Should be happy. Perfect. Do you have time for a cold drink? Yeah, let's go take a look at that bar you built. All right. I think you've earned it. Always five o'clock somewhere, right? <laughs> Hopefully. So if you have an outlet, um, a receptacle that looks like this with two prongs, you right. know that it is ungrounded. No ground. If you see one with three prongs, is it grounded? Not always the case. And that's why you want to grab a little tester like this. For six or seven dollars at your home center, you can pick one of these up and it can kind of tell you the situation you have going on inside that receptacle. Three prongs on one side, three lights on the other side, a little grid up there. And so if I plug it in, I get one light in the middle. Uh, that says open ground? What does right. that mean? It means it's the exact same situation as this. Even though they put a three-prong receptacle in, there's still no ground. No ground wire. They no just... ground wire. Hmm. They just did it to adapt to their device. Tricky. Okay. And if I put this one in here, two lights, that tells me hot, neutral, reversed? Right. So they're actually on the wrong terminals. They've swapped the black and the white wire are on opposite sides. But it's working, so what do I care about that? You care about that because if you have an appliance or a device plugged in, the on-off switch isn't really turning it on and off anymore. It's stopping the circuit from being complete, but power is still flowing through the system instead of stopping at the switch. Don't put your knife in the toaster. Do not put your knife in the toaster. Okay, and then the final one, two lights over here. Yeah. All good. That's what it should look like. Oh, all right, you just earned yourself another cold one. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Heath. Thanks. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.